Hi, um, this is just going to be a short video to touch base. Um, so I want to make certain, you know, if anybody is um, needs to, you know, get face-to-face uh, -face help or well over Zoom help, um, you know, we still are doing these sessions. Um, so here we are at week 12. Uh, um, I thought maybe I would talk a little bit about the assignment for this week as usual. So, so maybe I'll just look at the um, assignment description here in a second. Um, kind of as a reminder or just, you know, to let you guys know where we're at if you're watching this video. So we've really just got this week and next week. Um, so we're going to have this week on, on dictionaries and hashing. And then next week, we'll talk a little bit about the standard template library. And then the week after that is, is really finals week. Um, and we'll have our test two during the finals week um, for that. OK. So um, let me go ahead and. Let's open up the assignment description for the hashing and dictionaries. So this assignment might be a little bit bigger than some of the past ones. Um, although last week's uh, was, well, well, last week on the binary tree, maybe it wasn't that big. It probably wasn't as big as this one's going to be. So um, so this week we're looking at uh, dictionaries and hashing. So this is a important, you know, kind of data structure to get your mind around or to understand how um, hashing works in general. So, so really the, the abstract data type is a dictionary. Um, so a <laughs> misspelling there. So a, a dictionary is really just um, the idea of an abstraction around where you identify some sort of a record with a key, and the key doesn't have to be an index. Um, so it doesn't have to be like an integer index. So, so the key could be something more arbitrary, like uh, the name of an employee or their ID, like, like your employee ID is a common kind of key in the database, right? So this is a very common operation, but, but dictionaries are really just very general purpose ideas. And, and most of the, the data structures that we've looked at at this point um, in our class, could be used to implement uh, the dictionary. So you just have to have some way of mapping um, the arbitrary key uh, to search for the item that it's associated with, okay? So you could just use like e even just a regular list or a linked list or a regular array of, of like your records, okay? So in, in this assignment, we create uh, an employee type that we use is sort of our record. Okay, so it's, it's really inside of a class. So we're, we're kind of creating dictionaries of employees, right? Um, but, you know, we could just keep like a, 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 a regular C array of employees of all the employees that we're managing or a linked list using linked list types. Um, and then we could implement the um, the, the, the functions for the dictionary that, that the API, the, the dictionary type uh, um, defines, okay? So uh, actually we, we call this a, a key value pair. So, so dictionaries have a couple of different names. Um, so you call these maps, um, some programming languages call these hashes, some call them dictionaries. Uh, key value pairs is another name, right? So, but but this is really the class that holds the API, all right? Um, so, and and th this name kind of comes from our readings, okay? So, the, the these classes and the API comes from the Schaffer textbook that you should have been done doing your readings from this week here. So, let, let's let's just look at it real quickly. Maybe I'll first just look at the uh, employee um, record real quickly, just to make certain that you kind of uh, understand it. So the employee class um, is meant to be a simple class here. Um, so it's not a template class, it's just a regular class employee. And it's just got some feel, some example fields, like, you know, if you're trying to keep a database of employee information, you know, you might have to keep track of their name and their address and their salary. There'd be a lot more information, right, than uh, that you would need, like, uh, I don't know, the department they work in, their job description, um, all kinds of other stuff, right? Other contact information besides address, maybe. 
Um, so, so, so this is just a general kind of record. And, and you, know, you, you can imagine that it really doesn't matter what we use, what we're keeping track of in our dictionaries or our key value pairs here. Um, you know, so we could keep a hash of, uh, of classes, um, if we were doing like a, um, uh, an application for uh, keeping track of grades of students or get, keep a hash of students for, for students in a class or, or all kinds of different things, right? So let's, um, you shouldn't have to change this class um, um, here. So let's look at the, the, the key value pair. So, This is the thing that really defines the API um, for basically a, a dictionary or a key value pair or a map, you know, whatever we call this abstract data type, right? And it has two main methods. Um, the, um, I mean, it kind of really has one. Um, so, so you create the object where you associate the key with a value. Um, And um, we want to search. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so, so I'm, I'm misleading a little bit. So the key value pair is really just an abstract class, um, so that we can associate a key with a value. Okay. So this isn't the main class. Um, so again, this one you won't have to uh, change uh, very much uh, in this assignment. So yeah, it really is the hash dictionary. Although you know, using a hash to create your dictionary. Um, you could use different methods kind of as I was talking about. Um, it wouldn't necessarily have to be a hash, but but we're studying hashing uh, this week here. So, so the hash dictionary is going to be the class that you mostly make changes to. Um, so this is the one that you're going to have to add in um, like your search and your other functions and things like that. So. So anyway, let, let's look at the task. So, so your first task is going to be implement um, um, uh, a, a probe sequence. Okay, so so we we are basically implementing hashing um, in our hashing dictionary here, right? So um, you have to add a, a member function named probe. So the, the probe member function takes a key um, and it should return an integer as an index. So it's going to um, implement the, 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 the probe sequence that we talked about um, in our materials and our videos for this week on hashing, right? Um, So it's a member function that two, takes two parameters. It takes the key um, uh, as an integer. Um, and, oh, it takes, takes the key that you're trying to probe, um, and then it takes an integer index value, right? So, so basically, all you have to do is is define a probe sequence um, for your probe here. Okay, so um, and then your second function is, is really doing the main work. Is, is you, know, you have to define your actual hash on the key, right? So, so the probe um, 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 should just implement a, a quadratic uh, probing sequence, like we talked about on the uh, Schaffer textbook, right? So. Um, so as usual, you know, um, if you don't quite understand the details of that, it's good to look at the test. So, so always go back to the um, tests here. So for our first, um, your first task, you have to implement your probe here, right? Um, and this really kind of tells you. So like I said, we, we, we kind of, for the probe, um, since we're not doing secondary hashing, um, the, we, we ignore the ID, uh, you know, the, 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 the ID for our record that we're trying to insert here. We're trying to hash into our table. Um, so we're really just doing the probe sequence, okay? So th this 
defined uh, a quadratic uh, probe here. So if your index is two, um, um, basically it's just, um, you know, so, so these for C1 equals one, C2 equals two, and C3 equals three, this, this is the, you know, so this means uh, one X squared plus, plus two X plus two. Okay, so, so when, when um, the probe index is zero, the, then the x squared and the x term go away and it just returns two, right? So, so that, that's why you get two out of that for your, your um, probe sequence. Don't forget to do a mod by the, um, the, the hash table size here for the probe sequence, right? So if, if the, the index is one, that's one x squared, which is one, plus two, you know, so, so that, 2x becomes 2 um, plus 2. Okay, so, so that becomes 5, right? Um, oh, yeah, so you don't actually do the mod here. It's the hash function that takes care of the mod, right? So if you do um, probe sequence of, of 2, that should be 1 times um, 2 squared. So that's 4 plus 2 times 2. That's another 4. Um, Plus, plus two, right? So you get four plus four plus two, and that's where the 10 comes from, right? And we should be able to do the rest of these here, right? So as usual, you know, I encourage you, you know, after you uh, uncomment your first test, basically it's gonna expect that you have a probe, in, uh, a function named probe in your hash dictionary, but you don't have that right yet. So I mean, if you do a build, um, it will fail, um, trying to build your tests because there's there's nothing called probe in your hash dictionary. So, um, you know, you should start by adding in just your declaration of the probe type. So this should take two parameters, right? The um, Um, the ID, uh, which will just be an integer in this case, um, and then the, the probe index which will be another integer. Okay. So, um, something like that, right? So, and in this case, um, you know, probably the probe method is not going to actually change your uh, hash dictionary class. So this should probably be a constant function. Uh, hopefully, I mentioned that on here. Um, yeah, so it should be a constant class member function. So if, hopefully, everybody has kind of run across this enough now that, that you know what I mean by a constant function. Any, any function that doesn't actually change. Uh, any of the member variables of your class. So in this case, if we're not changing the table size um, or the hash table or anything, um, um, it, it should be a constant function. Right? So uh, with that, that should actually allow um, our tests to build, but it won't be able to link together because we haven't implemented our probe function yet. Right? And then once once that builds, though, um, but but yeah, it won't link it won't link together until we actually have an implementation of probe, um, and we can do that. Like you know, as usual, I encourage you, you know, once you get it past this part, so that the the, the tests are building, then get it so that uh, you actually add your an, an implementation probe that start with a um, Start with a um, just just a stub function, right? So, so 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 this will actually successfully build the tests, but we can't link it together until we have uh, some implementation probe. But we can just like return two, for example. So then we can pass our first tests here. So um, I'm not employee uh, hash dictionary at CPP here. So. Um, So if we want to get going here, um, I'll just 
go ahead and pan to the end here. And I'll always start by also getting your function documentation going. Right. So in this case, our probe is a member function of our um, hash dictionary class L, and this is a template class. So, um, so it's not only a member function, but we have to make it a uh, template member function as well, right? So, and we get that specified first to say that it's a member of this um, hash dictionary uh, template class, and, and it is also a template uh, member function. And we've got two template values here, the key and the value. Um, so we've got two template um, types here. And we can stub it out to return to here, right? So in this case, um, we're, we're calculating probe basically, okay? So um, using a quadratic probe sequence, um, give the uh, probe value for a particular index input, okay. And uh, it's, it's good to note that in this function, we don't actually need or use the um, the, uh, the 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 ID uh, of the item that we're trying to insert um, since uh, we're not doing. Um, Uh, or what do you call it? Um, we're not using secondary hashing in this case, so, so we don't really need the ID for the probe here. Okay, so this function has a parameter, has two parameters. PID, um, which is not used um, in the probe function. And then the index is the probe index we want to calculate. And it returns an int value, which is the calculated probe um, offset for the indicated by index, right? So that's your basic stub of the function, right? Um, with our um, documentation for the function here. So if we do everything right, um, it should build now because now we've actually got a probe function um, that um, hopefully has the right signature and we can link that together. And I'll build pretty quickly because all, all I have to do is build the, um, oh, no rebuild the, uh, the test there. So um, usually if you don't change anything in the test, it shouldn't have to rebuild that. Maybe I did a clean there. I wasn't uh, paying attention. So anyway, so rebuild that and it should run. And we should be able to run it um, and we should then start doing our tests here. Um, and since we're returning to, it should should return, it should pass the first test, but um, of course it won't pass these other tests until you're actually implementing the, uh, the quick the, the correct quadratic um, function um, to calculate the probe sequence here, right? So we built, let's try testing. So the first one we fail now is on line 81, but, but yeah, we did pass that first one, right? So as usual, that, that gets you going. Um, so to implement, hopefully the probe, if you can get that far, um, is pretty easy to implement, right? So you just need to do the quadratic function, like kind of like our Schaffer textbook showed uh, for these particular values of our x squared term and our uh, x to the power of one term and our constant term here. 
for the quadratic function. Um, now, the second thing then is you have to implement the hash, okay? So this um, actually uses the key, okay? So it has kind of the same fun, the, the same um, signature. It takes the, um, um, it takes the ID as, as input. Um, actually, it, just, it, it doesn't have the same signature. All, all you need is the ID here. Uh, we're going to reuse the probe function um, in your hash function, right? So if you have a collision, that's when you have to use the, the, the probe um, to, you know, find the, the next index you want to probe to, to see whether you collide there or not, okay? But um, the description, you know, again, you know, if, if you look at the examples in the, the Schaffer textbook, um, um, this We'll give you some ideas of how to implement our key. Um, so if you've never done anything with bit manipulations, um, um, you might have to kind of go read about those a little bit, right? So um, here we're assuming that the key is a 32-bit int. So we're going to only use the 16 bits uh, in the middle, right? So it's 32 two bits, we're gonna throw away the, the um, upper eight bits, the most significant eight bits and the lower eight bits or the least significant eight bits, okay? So one easy way to do that um, is to first mask out the upper eight bits. So if, if you use the, so, so you, you might need the, uh, the, the bitwise operator. So a single and is like a bitwise and single um, bar, as a bitwise or, um, and then um, you can actually use two arrows to do shifting. Okay, so in context, so you so far in this course, you might have become used to these meaning um, outputting to a stream, but these are these are also defined for bitwise um, operation, right? So so if the right hand item is like an integer and the left hand item is um, also an integer of some kind. Um, this will perform bit shifting um, doing this. Okay. So anyway, if, if you um, do a bitwise and that gets rid of the, um, the most significant um, upper bit. Uh, if you wanted to, you could also also put zeros down here that would get rid of the, the upper and lower bits. But to do the calculations, you want to shift these down so that you only have the, the 16 bits that were the, the middle 16 bits of the original integer, all right? So, and then there's a couple of other things you have to do. Um, so, so once you get the bits that you want to do your kind of actual operations on to do the hash, um, so I describe it here. Um, you know, so, so, you know, remember the, the whole purpose of this is we need to end up with a value that's in the range from zero to table size, whatever the, the table size is of the hash dictionary. Okay. So, you know, if, if, you know, that, that's one of the parameters when you create a hashing dictionary of, of how many entries are in your table size, right? And if you look at the test, you'll notice that um, when we create um, um, our, our dictionary here, um, we specify a size, uh, we're, we're using a seven for the table size here, okay? Um, so that, that's how you get in what the table size is. Okay? So, so all these, when you're doing your actual hashing for the second here, these all need to be mod seven because the only valid indexes are from zero to six. So, so you have to do that mod to, to, to get it within your table size here, okay? Um, So yeah, that's what we talk about here by modding by, by your table size because your your valid in, uh, indexes range from zero to table size minus one, whatever your table size is. Okay. Um, So 
So, oh, um, yeah, for this this whole thing, we're using mid-square hashing. So again, you had to watch my my um, lecture videos and or done the reading for this week. Okay, so mid-square hashing is just one of the kind of hashing techniques that, that was talking about. So the mid part comes from taking the middle bit. Um, and then basically, once you have the middle bits, you just square it, right? And that'll give you pretty much your hash key, except for you square, it, and then you have to take the mod in order to make certain you put it into your range, okay? Um, and, but, but uh, so then you're not quite done. Um, and, and then at that point, you have to um, use the, um, um, the collision resolution. So this is where you use the probe. So once you've got your initial hash, um, uh, and, and don't forget to add in the probe index. So even for a probe index of zero, we're adding in um, a two to, to that, that mid-square hash that you create, okay? So that will um, give you your first probe value and you have to check um, um, or I'm sorry, yeah, you don't do any of this stuff that I'm kind of describing right now in, in the initial hash. So, so the hash will just give you a value, uh, oh, and you don't actually even use the probe, so I'm sorry about that. Um, so, so you're going to use the, the hash and the probe together when you try to do the insert, okay? So, so yeah, so um, for your hash method, all you're doing is doing the mid-square um, hash, don't forget to mod it by your table size, but then you just return that, okay? And then finally, for your insert and your find, you have to put those together, right? So when you insert, uh, you're gonna give um, a, um, I'll just look at the, the, the test for the insert real quickly here. So as your test for the hash, But when you insert a value um, into your dictionary here, basically what you do is um, you, you have to pass in, so we're, we're kind of still testing probe and hash here, right? But um, when you insert, you have to pass in the uh, an ID, which, which is your key, and then the value that you want to insert, which is going to be an employee object, an instance of an employee. Okay, so that's what you do when you pass when, when you call the insert function on, on this assignment, right? Um, and then what you, what you need to do in insert, and you do a similar thing for find. Okay, is is you need to use the hash function to find a location. Um, and you need to add in the probe. So, so you're, you're, you start off with a probe index of zero, right? And, and so, so you, you hash the key and, and you probe it index zero. You, you add those together. Don't forget to mod by the size because I could wrap it around when you add, every time you add in your index, right? Um, every time you add in the probe offset, right? And then you check whether, um, for insert, you check whether that, that location in the table is empty or not, right? Um, and you can determine if an if a item is empty or not um, by checking, um, and I'll show you here in a second. And if it's empty, then you just uh, insert that. Um, and the insert function doesn't return any results, so it's going to be a void function. So, so notice it's not returning anything, right? If it's a collision, then you have to go to the probe index one, right? So you call probe with the index value of one, that will return the next offset that you add to your hash. So you take the hash, you add that value in, um, and, and you see if that's a collision or not, right? And you keep doing that until you find a, um, um, value, you find an empty slot where the, um, uh, where no collision occurs, okay? Um, so uh, if, when you want to check for an empty key, um, notice that, that there's a, a special key called empty key here. 
uh, which we define, uh, well, actually you have to pass that in when you, when you create a new instance of like your hash dictionary class, right? So, uh, oh, the, and, and actually you're supposed to pass that in in the constructor, right? So again, um, for these tests here, whenever we created our hash dictionary, um, we passed in the, um, the representation of what an empty, you know, of the special key value that you can use to indicate an empty slot, right? Um, and then if, if you look at the functions I gave you, uh, specifically the constructor for the, the, the uh, hash dictionary, basically uh, it dynamically allocates the hash table for you, right? Which is a new um, table of these key value pairs of, of whatever size we're asked to do. And then it fills all of these um, so that the key um, is the empty key. So, so it fills all these key value pairs to have the empty key. Right? So you can use that then. Um, so you can check, you know, when in your insert or in your find, um, you can check if you do a get key and you get the empty key, then it's empty and it's safe to insert it there. Or, or if you do a find um, and it's empty, then that's an indication that uh, you're done searching, right? So, so. Um, uh, you know, when you do a find, um, the, the location that you look at, if it has a non-empty key, you can check whether you found it or not. If you didn't find it, you have to, to keep going on your probe sequence until you either find it or you reach an empty slot, which means that you failed in your search, all right? So anyway, that, that's a little bit longer than, than I thought I was, was going to talk about here. But, but yeah, those are kind of described here, although, you know, they're described somewhat personally. So you really will, will have to, to get the details of like the find and the insert and also to get the details of this, um, the, this uh, mid-square hashing and, and how the quadratic probe function works. You know, you'll have to read the textbook or watch my videos or hopefully both um, for the things this week here. All right. But yeah, those are the four things you have to implement: so the, the 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 probe function, the hash function, um, which actually both be constant functions, and then the insert um, and find. Find will also be a constant function because it doesn't change. The only one that's a non-constant member function is insert, which should be inserting or trying to insert uh, a new key value pair into your dictionary. All right. Okay, so really that's kind of the basics of the assignment. As usual, if you have questions on the assignment, feel free to email me or jump in, you know, on our next help session this week. Um, but um, otherwise, um, that's it for this week. And um, I will see you um, at our next help session. All right, see you later.